Odell Beckham Jr., he was in the news and the headlines yesterday. Uh, he did greet the media after a practice yesterday, and I'm not really sure what to make of it other than I think this is about the money and eventually will be about the money. But he didn't really come out and say it, although it was clearly asked. At one point, somebody asked him, you know, are you motivated, you know, by, by the, the contract to, to skip out on the OTAs, the voluntary ones that he didn't attend? And he said no. Uh, and, and basically he was in California taking time off, enjoying, relaxing, and getting ready for the start of the season. Will there be a new contract offered to him? I don't think it will be a bad idea if the Giants got that out of the way and, and made it a feel-good story before the end of July. Is that going to happen? Let's talk to Pat Leonard, New York Daily News uh, beat writer, covers the Giants. Pat, Roger Weiland on 104.5 of Team ESPN Radio in Albany, along with Chris Honorado. Good morning. Roger and Chris, good morning. How are you? We are doing fantastic. Um, loaded question here, but <laughs> what did what did you make of the uh, twelve minute media session with with Odell yesterday? <laughs> well, no, you're right. It is a loaded question. I mean, it was very interesting because, like, that was actually my question near the end, where I was trying to pin him down and just get a yes or no answer out of him about the contract, and then he finally did say no, mm -hmm. and it was nice to hear that. Except. It was inexplicable why he dodged the question so many different ways earlier. Um, and I think the, the only explanation is this, and what it seemed like all along is that his contract does have something to do with all of this, but he's not, at least all indications, and from what he said yesterday, he doesn't intend to necessarily hold out, but he wants to raise the issue of the fact that he believes he's worth more, wants to get paid, and I don't blame him for wanting to seek a fair deal. Um, it's just it becomes an issue in the sense that he's not just a star player who who is owed his money. There's a lot more to him. And yesterday was kind of you know you saw what the positives and negatives of Odell. On the one hand, he's reflective. He's talking about how he wants to get better, grow and mature. On the other hand, he's saying he doesn't know if it makes a difference if he gets a couple more reps in with Eli. And, of course, the head coach in the offseason, one of his main concerns is that they didn't have a high enough completion percentage. And so, you know, and, and then even dancing around, I mean, Eli Manning, when he was asked about this memorabilia scandal, walks out the door at Quest Diagnostics Training Center and says, I have nothing to hide. I did nothing wrong. That's how you deny something. <laughs> and yesterday, when Odell finally said no, it was good to hear him say that, except he gave like three or four different answers to the same question. So you were still left kind of not knowing where he stood on all of it. Did he look like the same Odell and, uh, to you? Um, he looked like he was trying his hardest. Not trying his hardest, I shouldn't say that. He looked like he was making a concerted effort to be level-headed, composed, and really not to let the criticism phase him. And I think he had a lot of us convinced, except then after we left, we all noticed you know, that because his friend posted it, that he had worn cleats all day, you know, basically ripping the media, saying he wanted to silence his critics with names, you know, Wall Street Journal, all these different names, TMZ, SPN, scrawled on it. Honestly, I'm offended I wasn't on the cleats. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was really, it's just, it's a little bit hypocritical for him to say on the one hand that he's working on not taking things personally and not, you know, and, and, and rising above it all. And then it turns out earlier in the day for two hours he was wearing these cleats, ripping the media. So it's, it's, it's hard to know, you know. I mean, I, I will say this. Odell always tries, I think, to learn and, and get better. And I do think he aspires to be great. He works hard. There are a lot of admirable qualities about this guy, not, not just his talent. Um, but I think he has trouble staying focused away from – away from these types of distractions or frustrations. And our Gary Myers at the Daily News, like talked to Chris Carter yesterday, and one thing Carter said was that he's not sure if Beckham will ever get to Jerry Rice level because he doesn't know if he's going to be able to tune out all of the noise, you know, from not just the media, but like a guy like Josh Norman and that type of thing. So that's the question. Will he ever put it all together and, you know, take those types of cleats off let everything go and just let his play do the talking. Pat Leonard of the New York Daily News with us here covers the Giants, and you can find him on Twitter at P Leonard NYDN. And Pat, I know you're 
You're at mini camp today. We appreciate you taking the time. Uh, are there are there other roadblocks in play here in terms of the Giants' desire to give Odell Beckham a new deal, other than the fact that they could control him for the next four years with the two franchise tags? I think the road. I think the roadblocks are no. I mean, you know, one thing in the NFL. I mean, you can always free room and make, you know make room for money. I, I think the bigger issue is. And, and and look, the Giants are mostly tight lipped, so it's hard to know where everybody stands. Like say if you ask John Mara and then Jerry Reese and then Ben McAdoo, et cetera, you know, if they would have shared or differing opinions on a guy like Beckham and paying him long term. But the bottom line is Jerry Reese chooses his words very carefully, he always has, and he has no problem, no commenting when he's asked a question he doesn't want to answer. And the fact that he said after last season that Beckham needed to grow up. I mean, listen, Jerry Reese still has a job because of Beckham. I mean, he drafted right. Beckham, and that singular draft pick, yes, he's won two Super Bowls, but the stretch that the Giants have been on, they, you know, they hadn't made the playoffs for four straight years prior to last year, but his drafting of Beckham when other teams didn't believe in him, that is one of Reese's possibly singular accomplishments when all is said and done. So for him to say that Beckham needs to shape up really tells you something. And it's been discouraging, I think, and I guess what I'm getting to is we don't know exactly when it comes down to sitting at the negotiation table how those concerns about Beckham's maturity and growth would affect the money they ultimately pay him. We're talking with uh, Pat Leonard, New York Daily News, uh, Giants beat writer. Is what, What is the likelihood, Pat, of getting something done before the end of July, before training camp actually starts in earnest? I, you know, that's that's a good question. I I don't I don't think it's likely. Um, I think that all along the Giants intended to renegotiate. This is just this is just my hunch from from being around. It's not like someone from the Giants telling me this, but in general, too, it's more common in the NFL that if a guy like Odell outperforms a contract after year four, he would cash in. After year three, is is uh, happens less regularly. And I do think that the Giants benefit from the, you know, the 1.8 price they have him at right now. I mean, they're paying a lot of guys a lot of money, Vernon, Manning, et cetera, this season with high cap hits. Um, not, you know, not that they, not that they couldn't make room, but I, I just think that they have a significant amount of leverage, especially given some of their concerns about his decision making. Um, I will say this. What the Giants need to do is step up to the negotiation table. Now, we don't know for sure, like 100% that that hasn't happened, but put it all together. Why would Beckham even feel the need to make any kind of statement, whether it was, you know, whether it was a small, soft one, as it seems to be, or a holdout, if they were already sitting at the table hammering out details? I think, I think what the concern is from Beckham's side right now is that this topic hasn't been broached, and they feel like it's obvious based on how excellent he has been. And so I think what the Giants need to do, do I think something is going to get done before August? No. But do I think they will begin talking before then? Yes. In fact, and again, nothing we know for sure, but Beckham's presence at this minicamp this week may even tell you that a phone call or two might have happened between last week's report that this had to do with his contract and now, because while Beckham had continued to say that he was going to report for this mini camp, I think I was wondering, a lot of people were wondering if that would hold if no negotiations had begun. So I think good faith discussions will get them to where they need to be as far as no holdout. Um, And I believe I take Beckham at his word when he says that's not a strategy that he had considered. Uh, But I also Even though he answered that final question, no, I'm skeptical of whether it's not related. And I think what he wants to see, though, as he kind of soft pedals this, is good faith on the Giants' part. Pat Leonard, New York Daily News. Uh, Just two more comments for me, Pat. Uh, One, did he really compare himself in some way to LeBron James? Yeah, I don't know what that... What was that? (laughs) See, this is... No, he he did. And, you know, I said I reacted like that because that was my reaction is, I'm sitting there listening to him, and he's saying a lot of things that make sense. I, you know, 
maybe this was something of him just referencing the most recent thing on his mind. He's friends with LeBron. He has worked out with him in the offseason. And, again, this is it's a combination of one of the positives about Beckham and one of the negatives. He aspires to be among the best, if not the best. So a guy like LeBron is someone he references, he studies, he works out with, et cetera. But for you to be asked about a four-catch, 28-yard flame out with two drops, including a drop touchdown and punching a hole in the wall, <laughs> and your response is, this, yeah, yeah, I have to bounce back. I've reflected on it a lot. It's kind of like LeBron losing in the finals. I know what he's saying is that it's like a guy who wants to be the best having to rebuild. But words matter. I mean, <laughs> he is not LeBron James. And I, that, that's another thing kind of I referenced in today's story is that type of logic. I mean, imagine being at the negotiating table and hearing LeBron's name come up in context with Odell as far as his worth. Is he an icon as far as football is concerned? Is he an otherworldly talent? Are those similarities to James? Does he want to be the greatest in his sport? Yes. But is he a three-time champion? No. And so those are just like slight windows into little issues or little, little things that could become bigger problems, especially as he tweets out photos on Instagram with the captions, know your worth. <laughs> you know, worth translates to dollars, translates to what do you think your, your value is to our team. And the Giants, I firmly believe that eventually this is going to resolve because if the Giants don't think that they're going to pay him, I'm not sure where their heads are. So it's not about that they're never going to pay him, I don't think. I just think while Beckham wants to see good faith, I think the Giants want to see good faith and good movement towards being a part of the team and not just a singular star who is on the Giants. And yesterday's press conference showed you a little bit of both, which is kind of what he's been all the way. He's a good teammate. He's dutiful. He's hardworking. But there's always that tinge of something that you, you just want more. And Pat, on a lighter note, is that a new hairdo for Ben McAdoo? <laughs> this, is, this is my question. How much did that haircut cost? That, that's what I want to know. Because <laughs> that was either, it, was it 8 bucks, 11 bucks, or was it like 42 with tip and that? <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't figure it out. Well, but what a slick back. I mean, like, what a slick back. Looked like Pat Riley. Yeah. <laughs> Showtime, Ben <laughs> Pat McAdoo. Riley, yeah, it looked like he was trying out for a remake of The Outsiders. <laughs> Tony <laughs> That's good. <laughs> hey, Pat, man, you do a great job. We enjoy your work in the New York Daily News. And uh, joining us here on uh, 104.5 of Team ESPN Radio, I'm sure we'll reach out again. And if not, we'll we'll definitely see you at, uh, at training camp at East Rutherford. Thank you, Roger and Chris. Really appreciate it.